Welcome, and thanks for joining us for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. If you have joined us today, you can see that we are ready for you. So we are bringing best practices in the nerdiest way that we know how. So welcome back, and thanks for joining us. Uh, Michael Nugier, you are phenomenal. Day three, thanks for showing up and nerding out again. Uh, today's conversation is nonprofit cybersecurity best practices. Um, and again, back you know, with our best friend here, Michael Nugier. Uh, Julia Patrick joins me. Julia is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And thanks to her, we have these wonderful platforms and episodes to discuss these conversations. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group, and really blessed to serve alongside Julia as the co-host of The Nonprofit Show. And if it weren't for our presenting sponsors, we would not be able to have so much fun. So thank you to our sponsors that invest in these conversations, invest in the American Nonprofit Academy, and truly in the sector at large. We are so grateful to have your commitment um, and your investment again in these conversations. So thank you to our presenting sponsors. And back to our guest today. Welcome back, Michael. I feel like, you know, you're just, you're a steady now. And, and I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. I'll be here daily. Yeah, I, just, just, I, I came home and I was excited to wake up and, and start back onto this, uh, this podcast series again. And I was like, all morning, my wife was like, what are you running around with a smile on your face for? And I was like, I need to do this again. It's going to be great. It's great. So you've been in Minnesota the last two days, different cities within Minnesota, mm -hmm. and now you're back in your home state or, or where you reside in Colorado. So, so glad to have you back, Michael. And um, tell us a little bit about what we're going to cover today, because again, 30 dedicated minutes to cybersecurity. 30 dedicated minutes of cybersecurity. I think today we're going to recap some of the trends that we talked about, but I want to I want to take those trends and tie them into the best practices that that realistically every organization should do, um, not just nonprofits and what those best practices are. Right, they, they can seem overwhelming. Most people are probably like, I'm really scared after the last two days. Uh, yeah. What do I What do I have to do? Yeah, <laughs> raise raise your hand if you're scared. Um, and so, right, what, what can be done? What are some quick wins that organizations can focus on? And then what are some of the standards that they need to focus on moving forward? Okay. okay. So, you know, that's like one of the things um, I was talking about uh, with somebody yesterday was that you scared the hell out of me. But at the same time, I felt like you were giving me knowledge and a roadmap for um, navigating it. And so even though it's really, it's been tough to hear some of this, um, I feel like there is a roadmap and there is a path to helping us all not become so vulnerable. So the first thing I think we want to ask you are like, what are cybersecurity trends? And then how do you, you know, plan ahead for these things? Yeah, uh, from a best practices perspective in the industry, the big trends have been focused on, as I stated yesterday, this visibility, understanding what's happening within your environment uh, and, and where you where your weaknesses lie. If you understand those, you understand what you have to protect, then you have a, a great idea of what to what to plan for moving moving ahead, what what to budget for, uh, what software and consulting you might need. Uh, to drive uh, better security posture in your organization. I love that. I love the way that yeah. you phrase that. The assessment piece is really what hit me. So again, if this is your first episode with Michael, there are two previous ones that you will definitely want to check out. Um, and that is where I learned of the visibility and the assessment and really identifying where are we currently? You know, what, what systems are working? What systems do we need to improve? Um, and really identifying uh, that, that baseline of visibility um, that's been probably my biggest, one of my biggest takeaways. There's been a lot, but that's one of my biggest. Yeah, I think uh, as, as you talk about uh, going on your family vacation next year and you're going to take a road trip, right? You know your destination, right? Uh, mm -hmm. is, is In this case, it's security and being secure, but you can't get there if you don't know where you're going to leave from. And so assessing your current state and where you are helps build that those directions to move forward. And that I think is I can drive that home all day. I can probably talk for the next 30 minutes just about 
building that current state, understanding what what risks you have and aligning those, right? Because cybersecurity risk has often been seen as this, this other type of risk, but it realistically is the, the business's risk, right? It, it plays into all the risks that we're planning for now. Right. So let's expand a little bit on that. Um, you mentioned this briefly um, on one of the two previous episodes about the risk factor and purchasing insurance, not just as part of the budgeting, but just, can you talk about that briefly? Yeah, so insurance is, right, I'm not going to say that you have to buy insurance or you shouldn't buy it, you should or shouldn't buy it, but insurance is, is a, a fail safe, right? We all want to have some form of life insurance or health insurance because it is a stop gap. Uh, and in these cases, you have to do what's best for your organization. But buying insurance years ago was really easy. It was an afterthought. It was added on to liability. Now it is a, it is a very, very much a, a consideration for what your security posture is. Uh, and what you need to budget for moving forward. And so uh, we've seen a lot of a lot of clients with denials coming back from their cyber insurers because they don't have the best practices that they need in place. And those best practices are, you know, they range uh, organization to organization, but they want you to have multi-factor authentication. They want you to be uh, consistently updating your your visibility into your security weaknesses. Those are the vulnerability assessments, penetration testing. They want to make sure that you have policies and plans in place to uh, to set the standards of cybersecurity in your organization and plan for uh, an incident, you know, a cyber attack if one were to happen. Uh, and if those things aren't in place, we're either seeing denials or a lot higher premiums, similar to health insurance, right? If there are considerations for your health that, that might lead to, you know, detriment in the near future, uh, health insurance will raise your premium or even deny you health insurance. Same concept now we're starting to see that emerge in, in this industry. Wow. Okay. So that like brings it home. I mean, because yeah. Yeah. It, it makes it even more incumbent upon our organizations to be doing these assessments and really figuring out a path. Yes. I well, and to take it seriously, because I feel like, yeah. you know, it's also that identity theft. Oh, that won't happen to me. Right. Cybersecurity, that won't happen to us. You know, again, what Julia said in a previous show is we're really small. Like, why would someone come to maybe an organization under a million and not a nationally federated nonprofit that is a multi-million and therefore, you know, their gain could be could be bigger or greater. Um, but this is no one's immune to cybersecurity. And, and it is it is opportunistic, right? It's that's that's what uh, attackers are looking to do and hackers are looking to do is where where is there an easy opportunity for me to gain even a, a little bit of access or a little bit of, of money, right? Just enough, like if I can get five or six small businesses uh, because they haven't been proactive in their cybersecurity, rather than trying to go after a much larger organization that might have some of these proactive measures in place, it's a lot easier and easy is, Easy is what people are focused on from a from a cyber attack perspective. Sure, sure, because I think exactly what Jared just said. It's the other. It's going to be somebody else. Okay, so then let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this. How much is this going to cost us up front? I know you you gave us a number, and I don't know if I can recall it correctly. The average cyber attack cost is. In the United States, it's $8.64 million, or it was in the in 2020, right? We're still compiling that data this year. We think it's going to rise because we've seen a lot of large ransomware cases this year, um, but 8.64 in the United States. Worldwide, it's about $3.9 million per breach. Uh, that being said, right, if you were an attacker and you knew that, that you were going to get double the amount of money, would you not target the United States? And so as having a presence in the United States, we are automatically a, a, a bigger target for cyber attacks. Wow. So I don't know the, we know there's 1.8 million nonprofits in the U.S. and I don't know their average size, but I feel like, you know, a $3.8 million cybersecurity threat would really, yes, wipe out the organization. And as you had said previously, these are business ending situations. And mm -hmm. there are several nonprofits, right, that are even under a million dollars, but a $3.8 million threat 
that is severe and that is so frightening. It really is. Yes. Yeah. And you have to remember that those statistics were built on businesses uh, in the small business sector and all the way up to the Fortune 100. And so obviously the the, the average breaks down. And so 8.64 million for a small uh, a much smaller nonprofit or small business is obviously going to be a, a lot less, but still detrimental from a, a cost perspective. Yeah. So how do we prepare for this? Again, I had mentioned, you know, information uh, technology is something I bring up in strategic planning. And I know that this is part of conversations around the boardroom. So looking ahead into next year, how do we truly budget for the needs of cybersecurity? Yeah, so yesterday I gave a statistic from several years ago, right? That cybersecurity was three to 5% of the IT budget. Realistically today, it's about 10 to 15%, even rising to about 20% of the actual IT budget. Uh, and focusing on what that is, and, and right, is, is that percentage focused on tools and protection or is it focused on the holistic cybersecurity mission, because that risk, again, as we just talked about, is business risk. And so uh, as cyber insurance is starting to ask uh, more detailed questions about your posture and raising your rates, depending on how secure they think you are uh, and how much of a risk you are, understanding that that is not necessarily a cybersecurity cost. It is a business cost moving forward, that that insurance cost. So um, Mm -hmm. that's why I say it might even be 20% at this point. Uh, of your total or overall IT um, spend. And so um, uh, planning, planning for this and driving that culture, as we talked about uh, yesterday, building a culture that, that emphasizes security for every individual within the organization, making sure that, that it is a focus uh, moving forward for every individual in that organization as well is, is gonna help. Now, Michael, I want you to get out your crystal ball, okay? I don't know if you traveled with that in Minnesota, but if it's there in Colorado, go ahead and get it out. As, as Julia says, dust it off. I, I'm sure, come on, if you, if you have those glasses, you have to have a crystal ball. You have ball. to have, yeah. So if you're looking ahead, if there was a big jump from 5% to almost 20%, should we forecast going forward in our budget? So if we're creating, you know, a three to five year strategic plan, should we prepare for an increase of this budget? I think I, I um, the ball. I, I told you. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I mentioned this the other day, right? Twenty years ago, if you didn't have a website, you weren't going to be successful. Ten years ago, if you didn't have a social media presence, today, my prediction is, if you don't have a cybersecurity strategy, uh, you're not going to be successful moving forward. And so, should you plan for an increase in the cybersecurity budget? I absolutely think so. Uh, but I think that is all dependent on uh, assessing your your current risks, where your risks actually are, and what you're actually doing to accept those, mitigate those, transfer those risks uh, within your organization. And so um, that that could lead to a, an increase in budget. I think it would make more sense to have that assessment, build out that roadmap and that strategy, so that you knew what to budget for and plan on uh, in in some pretty decent round numbers. Yeah. And so I, you mentioned this yesterday, but I want to have you uh, dig in just a little bit before we get on to our next question. And that is I'm, all the things that I'm hearing you say, and just in these two now three days that we've been conversing, the folks that I've engaged with, our viewers, have come back really concerned about how little they understand about this. One of the, the comments I've had is, we can't do this ourselves. We didn't even know about this until we started hearing your guest. So, so paint us a picture is how we can get these assessments done because this isn't something I think we can do internally with a, a notepad and asking questions. It, it always, I, I, I would never, uh, I would never ask an organization to do a, like to do just a self-assessment. I think having an expert come in and outside third party assessing the environment from their perspective and when the best practices and the trends that they're seeing in the industry is always going to be my recommendation because they're going to have um, an understanding of the threat landscape, not just for your industry, but for your geographic location, for uh, a lot of different uh, perspectives on that. And so having, uh, you know, a trusted partner come in uh, and do something like an assessment or an audit of your IT controls 
to make sure that they align with best practices. And if they don't, building out that, that strategy and that roadmap to help you align over the next one, two, three, five years. Yeah. It's not a one I, and done is what I hear you saying. No, the journey, not a destination. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. I feel like a prerequisite is to ask the person, have you in your past been a heartless hacker? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, now you're qualified because we need that expertise. Um, and clearly that is not the route to take. You know, we don't want to invite the hacker into our dining room table. <laughs> you want to bring in that ethical perspective with it, right? I want to yes. emphasize the ethical hacking perspective, right? That's what we we uh, we have from a, that's what, essentially what a penetration test is. It's an ethical hacker coming in and saying, I know how a hacker will will come at your environment. Uh, and so we will test it the same way that any other hacker will, uh, following these frameworks and these methodologies. And then that uh, delivers a, an understanding, a, a much clearer understanding of where you are most vulnerable. Yeah. Okay. So we have had a lot of questions come in and this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, I, I want to ask you before we move on to our next question. What role do you think the new government cybercrime agency, GCA, is going to play in the cyber insurance industry? Uh, Crystal Ball. Uh, <laughs> Crystal Ball I think, on that, because you know it is the World Series. Yes. Um, what role do I think the government cybercrime agency is going to play? I think uh, it's going to develop the standards that every organization should probably follow, right? There are already standards out there, um, right? Um, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, NIST, has a cybersecurity framework um, <clears throat> that you can align with, and there are maturity models to that. There's the cybersecurity maturity model, which is also a federally run program um, or a federally designed program for the DOD so that you can align with maturing your cybersecurity posture. And then there's the, the Center for Internet Security actually has the top 18 things that you should focus on uh, to secure your environment. Uh, and following all of those, right, when, when my team goes in and does an assessment, we align with, with all three of those, right, and making sure that we're putting forth the best practices that help you align with any of those frameworks. And there are a handful of other frameworks as well, but uh, I think that that's probably what is going to come out of that is is a more detailed framework for security and, and also some rules around uh, maybe, uh, right, they, they've been mulling over whether or not it should be legal to pay ransom, right? It's already illegal to some extent to fund terrorist groups. And so if you get a ransomware attack, you have to be very, very sure that if you pay that, it is not funding a terrorist group because OFAC uh, is the federal department that will actually um, follow up with you on whether or not it is, it is a legitimate payment to um, a, a hacker and not a terrorist organization. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now <laughs> hair on fire for a third day. I uh -oh. don't have that much hair like, left. So I don't think do I need a, a defibrillator. Like, no, I'm like, yeah. this. okay, Shoot, let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Best practices here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to get into this and Jarrett and I are so curious about this. How do we educate our nonprofits to care about this? I mean, you talked about culture, um, training, education. What does this look like? And how do we immediately start getting our teams to work on this idea? Right. So I talked about the top-down approach, right? Culture has to be driven from the top down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if there's an emphasis on, um, on cybersecurity, right, making sure that it is an important aspect that everybody needs to focus on. Uh, for the mission and driving forward with your organization, uh, that helps provide that 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 caring aspect from every person in the organization. I think uh, earlier we were talking about the difference between training and education. Training is vitally important, right? It's usually um, walking through uh, pre-recorded materials or reading something to understand where you're at. I think education is really that sounding board that everybody needs to 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 start becoming more of an expert in this. Right. Not everybody has to be a cybersecurity expert, but if we are educating people and providing feedback and questions and answers uh, in that education, it is it is way more valuable than just a training. Right. Coupling the two together helps build uh, individual cybersecurity knowledge. It's not a <clears throat> it's not really an option to not pay attention to it right now. Right. As we've already talked about the last two and a half days, we've all been scared 
uh, and uh, right, learning about it is is step one, and learning about what to do about it is step two, right? Mm -hmm. Fascinating. I, I I can see what you said bleeding over into how we look at our organizations on the whole. You know how we treat personal development. I mean, this almost is a personal development issue ultimately, yeah. um, and yet. I can't think of one organization or person that I've met in the last forever that's actually brought this concept to their whole team. It seems like it's an other problem. It's right. accounting problem. It's, you know, HR problem. It's, it's something else. It's Somebody some else is responsible for it. Let's let them be responsible for it. And that's mm -hmm. right. Tying back into everybody has a responsibility when it comes to cybersecurity. You're touching data within your organization. You get emails from your organization. You have physical access to something. You have a responsibility to be that protection, uh, part of that protection, at least uh, moving forward and, and getting the education on how to do that, right? Just saying that you're responsible for it is not enough because there's probably going to be a thousand questions coming out. Uh, and so making sure that you are doing education uh, alongside of that training. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, everybody listening on here has a million and one questions. And if they want, they can reach out to me or there's a trusted advisor, somebody that they know that they can talk to about that and get those answers. Mm -hmm. Michael, I'm curious, um, my two main wheelhouses in consultancy work with nonprofits is fundraising and strategy. So when I'm listening to these conversations um, and I'm thinking, are funders playing a role in funding this need? You know, And I'm curious if you're aware, Michael, of any funders that do focus specifically around this cybersecurity an IT um, enhancement need? So I, I think that the answer is yes, I, I, I do see that in, in, the, in every industry, not in just a nonprofit, right? Whether it is a, a client or a, a large donor or even small donors, right? I, I pay attention uh, to where, where my, uh, my donations go because I wanna make sure that my information is safe with it as well. Right. And, and specifically in the nonprofit realm, there is this concept of anonymity, right? Not everybody wants to know, not, not everybody wants people to know that they're, they're a donor or a funder of, an, of this. And so maintaining that anonymity is highly important. Uh, and if you don't trust the organization's security to move forward, then um, you might not be a funder much longer. Um, we, get, we get questions um, from a lot of different clients uh, asking asking us to come in and, and do an assessment and do a vulnerability assessment uh, or penetration test so that they can provide that information to uh, a potential client or a potential funder to um, to provide them the this peace of mind that says hey we know that we don't have any security weaknesses on our um, on our network and uh, and here's here's the third party attestation for that right here's how you can see that, that we are secure. Providing that is is a, a business plan moving forward now. Well, and to what you said, it's not just about being proactive. It's about when an attack does happen, how we act upon that attack, right? So even sharing that <clears throat> attack plan, perhaps, um, I think is just as important as as putting these other elements in place to be prepared and to do whatever we need to do to mitigate the attack, but to realize that when and if an attack does happen, we're ready for that too, and here's the plan. Exactly, and as my father always told me, failing to plan is planning to fail, right? If you don't have uh, anything defining what you're supposed to do moving forward, then you're doing everything off the cuff in there uh, that inevitably leads to mistakes and uh, people running around and bumping into each other. So right, right. Well, funders, if you're listening, I, I hope that you're. Putting, <laughs> I hope that you're putting cybersecurity as one of the items that you will fund. You know, typically in the past, it's been only program program dollars, and that, of course, has been a big, big shift and change uh, to talk about personnel and to talk about program evaluation and a little bit of everything. So cybersecurity, I hope is a trend that funders will start to back so that we can ensure the safety 
of our constituencies and our communities in which we serve. That's that's my soapbox. <laughs> well, it's a good one. And I mean, if you think about all of the Silicon Valley based philanthropy that's leaking out across this country, the vast amounts of wealth that have been made from the tech sector, this should be something that we see coming about and, um, you know, it, almost becoming a part of capacity building. Yep. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. You know, we really need more Michaels in our space. Yeah. Uh, these ethical hackers, as, you, as you've called them. Um, and that is, it's just so important because I've sat here flabbergasted the last two shows and today too. Like this is Greek to me. It is so unfamiliar and it's really scary. And I wish I had counted how many times I've used that word or a synonym of the word um, because it really is a space that I don't think many of us are familiar with. Yeah. Um, and and as, as I say on almost every call that I'm on, there's always somebody willing to help. Cybersecurity is one of the largest um, communities out there, right? It's not a competition against different businesses. It's really a community sharing the intelligence that we have between everybody because we want to see protection for all organizations. We want to see a lowering in cybercrime um, moving forward. Well, this has been remarkable and it's hard to believe that our time is almost up. Before we let you go and end this three-day series, which has really um, stirred up so many more questions for me, what would you say to somebody in terms of a leader within an organization as a best practice to start learning or where do you get this information as opposed to just general media? Is there a place where you know leaders of nonprofits should be checking in. The, there are. Um, I'll give two resources today, and the first one is StaySafeOnline.org, uh, and that is not just for leaders of businesses, but also personal uh, and a personal understanding of cybersecurity. That okay. StaySafeOnline.org hosts Cybersecurity Awareness Month, which is October. Uh, happy Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, there are a lot of resources out there right now. Uh, Stay Safe Online hosts that. It is run by uh, a joint collabor or it's a collaborative effort um, between a couple federal uh, agencies, uh, one of which being uh, CISA, which is the uh, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. They also have a plethora of resources for businesses uh, to, uh, to help them understand uh, what, what to do next from a cybersecurity perspective. Uh, and if that gets overwhelming, uh, my phone is always available. The, there are a uh, hundred consultants out there that, that are able to talk to you. And I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Like I said, we are a community and we're here to uplift all businesses so that we can put an end to cybercrime. Wow. Well, you are an amazing representative of this whole I hate to use the word industry, but this thought leadership, and it's been really amazing to have you on. Um, I think we need to really be thinking more and more about this. It hasn't been part of our dialogue, um, not just on the nonprofit show, but across, you know, the nonprofit sector. And so it has been amazing. Here's Michael's information. Uh, Michael, I did not put your phone number on here. But I put on your email, and so, brother, you're going to be getting questions. <laughs> emails, emails are probably better anyway, right? And my voice is starting to go out right now, so. Oh, my gosh. Well, well day, day three of a national broadcast, you have brought yeah. so much wisdom, wow. value, and expertise. Um, Ide Bailey is very lucky to have you. We are very lucky to have this partnership with Ide Bailey um, and truly to know that Ide Bailey is here for our nonprofit sector across the nation. I'm so grateful. This has been a wonderful three-day series. Um, again, Michael, thank you so much for coming and nerding out with us. Um, it's been, yes, right, right on cue. Nerding out, you. It's been super nerdy and a lot of fun. I have learned so much. Um, and again, very grateful to have your partnership uh, with Ide Bailey through these last three days. So if you missed, if um, you're a viewer and you missed the previous two days or you want to go back and watch any of the episodes, I know I will, um, please do check them out. Julia Patrick, C 
CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group, and we are so grateful to have the continued support and investment from these presenting sponsors that you can see right here on the show. Many of these, Julia, I think they've been with us about, you know. Day one. Yeah, day one. So Day one, yeah. Hey, everybody, you know, this has been amazing. And I'm really appreciative that we got this glimpse into something that we need to be talking about. And I want to remind everybody as we end this episode to stay well so you can do well. Thank you so much, Michael. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Jarrett. We'll see you back here tomorrow.